you know, the past use or current use is held against it, I actually, uh, that makes me not want to support it because I don't want to see these people evicted. I don't want to see this, this use end because where are these people going to go? Um, I understand that's trans transitional, but other people would be transitioning in there if this use wasn't ending. Thank you. With that, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? One opposed? Okay, third reading uh, is carried. Um, that same bylaw for adoption. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Alto. So seconded by Councillor Coleman. All those in favor? Uh, any opposed? Thanks, Mr. Coates. And lastly, is to approve uh, consider approval of the development permit with variance. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Alto. Seconded by Councillor Madoff. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. Oh, one opposed. Sorry. Thank you, Councillor Isaac. Uh, Council, that brings us to the end of our land use matters. Uh, we still do have a long evening ahead of us. Uh, I know members of the public have been waiting to address us, but I promise we will be better listeners if we take a five-minute recess. So excuse us while we do that, and we'll be back to begin Section F. To address Council... And I think I need to um, ask you once again if I could call the meeting back to order. Thank you very much. So in this section, we have 14 requests to address council. Uh, all but two deal with short-term vacation rentals. Uh, there are three of us who have a conflict on this topic. So, uh, and, and we have to recuse ourselves. So uh, in order to avoid an awkward ballet, <laughs> Uh, I'm going to propose that we move uh, speakers 7 and 8 up to the top. Uh, that's Yvonne Mendel and Jenny Farkas. They speak, and then the rest of us recuse ourselves, and then um, the short-term vacation rental speakers can have the floor. So I do need a, an amendment to the agenda to do that. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Alto. Is there a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Young. Uh, all those in favour? Any opposed? Thanks. Uh, and again, for this section, um, same as Section C earlier on, uh, anyone who's speaking has five minutes to speak. The uh, light is green when you start and uh, orange at one minute and red when it's time to stop. Uh, and again, if you could respect the speaking time and stop at zero, um, uh, we won't have to cut you off. And uh, all the same stuff about no clapping and booing, just listening. So with that, uh, the first speaker has arrived. Welcome. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much. I will try to make this quick as I am still a um, breastfeeding mother and I have a crying baby at home. I am here to tell you that I'm really excited about Topaz Park. I live in the Hillside Quadra neighborhood. I have lived there for six and a half years. I live at 2538 Graham Street. I am a very busy mother of two young children and it's been very difficult for me to come here um, to make an ask of you. Um, I have been working um, for about two to three months on talking to my friends and family and my neighbours in my neighbourhood about Topaz Park to try and gain support for um, a bike park. My husband and I have made a design, a proposed design of what we think would be a great, a great start. Um, I have met with Councillor Isaac and Loveday to get some ideas, to get some feedback, um, and I have made some modifications my, to my design to make it more um, amenable and to play better with other user groups so as to not kind of take over. Um, I need to get to the other file here. I would like to start with an overview. I want to, where's the keyboard? I want to zoom in on this, please. Ah, there we go. Okay, so here we have Topaz Park. I've been visiting it regularly and looking at the area on the ground, taking photos, talking to people. Um, I've been organizing casual biking events for children. So I forgot if I told you, but my son is four years old and he can bike circles around me. Um, it's basically because it's easy for me to carry the baby and walk with my son uh, while he bikes ahead. So he's getting exercise, I'm getting exercise, everybody's happy. Um, putting everybody in the car and driving somewhere to a bike park, it's okay, but uh, we're losing valuable time doing that. So here's uh, Topaz Park. On the left-hand side, you have Blanchard, um, a busy area, right? Um, to the north is Finlayson. And as you can see, the majority of what we're looking at is um, soccer fields and organized 
sports areas. There's um, a lacrosse box that's a wonderful biking um, area. Um, and we've been using it semi-regularly. Um, there's the tennis courts. This aerial map is from 2015, so it's out of date. The tennis courts are now grass, and the grass is maybe about a foot high. And I would like to uh, move to the next. Oops. Um, okay. I want to zoom in a little bit. Can some? Can you zoom out? Maybe I'll let somebody else drive. Sorry, I think we're kind of competing for the <laughs> for the keyboard. Okay. So here we have the old tennis courts. Um, there is the lines, the white lines on here are the elevations, so there's an area of the park that's um, higher. Um, most of what we see on the screen right now is currently off-leash dog run. Um, there are quite a few kind of casual trails that braid. Um, there's a high point, as you can see, at the beginning of where the trails start. So right at the very south side, that's Glasgow, um, sorry, that's Topaz Avenue. A lot of residents in my neighborhood that live kind of on the lower end of Hillside Quadra have lived there for a long time, 5, 10, 15 years, and they don't know how to get to Topaz Park. For real. They don't know how to get to Topaz Park. They say, where, do, where would we park? Where would we go? How do, Glasgow what? And everybody knows where Beacon Hill Park is. Everybody's been to Central Park. Everybody's been to Mount Doug. Everybody's been to Thetis. And we have this amazing resource right at our footsteps within a few minutes walking distance. And families, great families that, that I see all the time that are very active, that are very engaged with their kids, they, they don't know how to get to Topaz Park. And so I would like to create some excitement around it, and I would like to bring more children to that to that space. I would like to hear children's voices cheering. I would like to see smiles. I would like to see energy. When I go there now, I see a few dog walkers. And, and I think dogs are great. I grew up on the farm with pets. I think that's amazing. Um, I'm not against dog walkers. So what we're proposing is two trails here. Um, and, I'm, and log rides, some basic features. It would not drastically change what is right currently there. I think it's family photos. And I just wanted to play a couple little videos of what my four-year-old, about how cycling is possible. That's the end of my time. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Um, have you met Mr. Soulier, our Director of Parks, yet? And can you... Mr. No, Soulier. but I feel like I owe you an apology for writing so many letters and emailing all your friends, and I feel like I kind of have it out for you. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies but in advance. I have apologized to your department in email. Already. Okay, so you're, but you're looped into the, the parks planning process. I'm all over Excellent. it. Excellent. <laughs> very good. Okay, thank you very much. I should have assumed as much. Uh, next speaker, please, is uh, Jenny Farkas. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor and Council. My name is Jenny Farkas. I'm the president of the North Park Neighborhood Association. And I'm speaking to you this evening on behalf of the North Park Neighborhood Association Board. A couple days ago, I sent a letter to you asking you to delay moving to rezoning any applications for um, cannabis storefronts uh, to give our neighborhood one month to develop made in North Park guidelines. Now this is a very quick special meeting that we're putting together. We also sent around to you our, uh, our poster for the meeting. And we promise to get you our guidelines by, um, our meeting is June 7th and we'll have the guidelines to you by June 15th. We quickly put this together. We've been thinking a lot of course about how this legislate your regulations would play out in our neighborhood and theory hit the wall of practice last week when the uh, rezoning application for the retailer on Cormorant Street came in front of you and we noticed that um, there was a recommendation to allow it to proceed to rezoning even though it was 192 meters from the next uh, cannabis retailer and that led us to un the understanding that in fact that 200 meter buffer is a guideline, not a, not a rule, and we didn't understand that. Our neighborhood is one square, mile, one square kilometer. 
we have 12 to 14 cannabis retailers in our neighborhood right now or within the buffer, that 200 meter buffer. For comparison, we have one liquor store. We, we don't want 12 to 14 of anything in our neighborhood. That's monoculture. We don't want 12 knitting shops. We don't want 12 pawn shops. We don't want 12 thrift stores. The cannabis retailers that grew in our neighborhood grew because our commercial spaces are affordable. Also, there's some vib there's vibrancy in our neighborhood. We want many kinds of commercial enterprises to have an opportunity to take advantage of those affordable spaces. We have a goal for uh, neighborhood economic development, vibrancy, vibrancy, all the things that you look at on a citywide scale, those are similar goals for our neighborhood. So we're gonna very quickly gather a whole bunch of people together, talk about what we think a, a, a limit would be and the best location for these cannabis dispensaries. Right now, three are being considered within 200 meters of the hub of all of our neighborhood's challenges, as somebody referred to our neighborhood, it's Pandora 900 block. We wouldn't want three, six, or 12 liquor stores in that part of our neighborhood, and we don't want three cannabis retailers within 200 meters. We thought there was a hard deadline to this rezoning application that would result in a natural thinning of what has happened in our neighborhood with the growth of 12 or 14 of these dispensaries. But we learned recently that it isn't a hard deadline and that you are allowing a rolling intake from the existing cannabis retailers. And therefore we felt we must step in, come up with our own guidelines and ask that you take them seriously when we present them to you in a month and then start dealing with the rezoning applications from North Park and anything within that 200 meter buffer such as the one on Johnson Street. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So we're now going to move up to the beginning of the list uh, to speaker one um, and I am going to hand the chair to Councillor Thornton Joe. Uh, Councillor Lucas is actually acting mayor this month but she has a conflict on this issue so it rolls forward to Councillor Thornton Joe. Um, and I'm going to recuse myself from uh, listening to all of the speakers on short-term vacation rentals uh, because of a perception of bias. Uh, while I don't run an Airbnb and I don't benefit from an Airbnb, there is one in the house that I live in, and I've recused myself uh, on this issue from the beginning. So I will do so tonight uh, and hand the chair to Councillor Thornton Joe. Thank you, Mayor Helps. Uh, Councillor Lucas? Thank you. As the general manager of a hotel, uh, this definitely puts me in a conflict of interest, so I'll have to recuse myself. Councillor Madoff? Thank you, and as I have a bed and breakfast unit in my home, there's also the perception of a conflict of interest, so I will excuse myself as well. Okay, thank you very much. And we'll just wait till they leave the room, and uh, the first speaker will be Eric Ney. Acting Mayor and Council, thank you once again for allowing me the opportunity to speak to you this evening. My name is Eric Ney, and I'm here tonight with other concerned citizens to ask City Council to take meaningful steps to address the proliferation of short-term vacation rentals and halt the negative effects they have on our community, our jobs, and housing affordability, availability, and livability. Joining me this evening are representatives from the Hotel Association of Greater Victoria, Tourism Victoria, the Hotel Workers Union, and Strata owners. Our group is disappointed that City Council has continued down the path of commercialization of residential strata and purpose-built rental buildings, favoring the property rights of developers and real estate speculators rather than supporting the as equal important property rights of our residents to peaceful enjoyment of the residential property and the right not to be forced to live next door to hotel suites. The City of Victoria is facing a housing crisis. Affordability, availability and livability are all being compromised when residential properties are being transformed into a commercial commodity for use as short-term vacation rentals 
rather than their intended use of providing shelter. Victoria is now ranked the second least affordable place to live in Canada. The 2016 Demographia International Housing Affordability Survey indicates that a home in Victoria now has a price tag that is more than six times the median household income of the area. In their view, a home in this city is seriously unaffordable to many buyers and is certainly well beyond the financial means of most renters. Adding to this unaffordability are local developers who are marketing their new projects as vacation rentals. Cielo Properties, recent conversion of 595 Pandora is just one example where residential property is being offered for sale as vacation rentals, putting first-time home buyers in competition with real estate speculators who view residential property simply as a means to earn a profit. Our group believes that the city's failure to take the necessary steps to end the proliferation of short-term vacation rentals is a significant contributing factor that is driving the housing crisis in Victoria today. Our housing crisis will only continue and will be made even worse if the City Council does not take immediate action to end the commercialization of residential property and right zone the downtown core and return residential property back to its intended use as a place for citizens to live, raise families and help build long-lasting and durable communities. The City Council needs to make a decision. This council, not city staff, need to decide if the rights of developers and those that operate illegal hotel suites as part of the grey economy outweigh the property rights of the entire residential population of downtown Victoria. Our group understands that the decision to remove transient accommodation as a permitted use will ultimately have to be a political decision and, not, and rather than a legal one. City staff has, inst has insisted insisted that taking away property rights of owners that are operating hotel suites and residential buildings will be problematic for the city. However, as you are aware, the City of Victoria su successfully downzoned the lands owned by Pacific National Investment in the Songhees, and those decisions were later upheld by the courts. Since local governments can make unfettered decisions about zoning, even if those decisions have adverse effects on the economic interests of property owners and developers. The lingering effects of downzoning transient accommodation will be resolved over time as current and future property owners come to grips with the issue of legal nonconformity. By making the right political decision, this council will be following the lead of other jurisdictions in the region, including District of Tofino, uh, cities of Richmond, Surrey and Vancouver who have all chosen that the sharing economy belongs solely in owner-occupied dwellings, licensed and fully taxed. All of these jurisdictions have been clear. No short-term vacation rentals in multi-family buildings. Each time uh, we have been here, you have asked staff to adjust their scope of work for their final report. We are here once again to ask you to direct staff to include only one option in their final report to Council on short-term vacation rentals. That option being the removal of transient accommodation as a permitted use in the downtown core. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker is Star McMichael. Good evening, councillors, your worship, wherever you are. Um, my name is Star McMichael, and I'm here in my capacity as first chair of Tourism Victoria. I thank you for the opportunity to uh, address the impacts of short-term vacation rentals on Victoria's communities, tourism and hospitality sector. There are more than 1,000 short-term rentals in uh, the City of Victoria with more than 1,700 across the CRD. They operate as unlicensed businesses, do not pay commercial taxes and produce an array of social and economic problems. I encourage Council to act now to stop the negative impacts these rentals are having, not only for the tourism and hospitality sector, but also the residents and communities that make up our city. Although my remarks are on behalf of Tourism Victoria representing tourism industry members, they are foremost from Tourism Victoria as a collaborating partner with the City of Victoria. To safeguard and promote sustainable carrying capacity for tourism in Victoria and to protect the interests